In a small village nestled in the mountains, there lived a man named Rio. Rio was a stonecutter, someone who worked every day carving stones into beautiful shapes and useful tools. It was hard work, but Rio was skilled at it. Every morning, he would take his tools and head to the mountainside, where he would spend hours chipping away at large rocks. His life was simple, and though he wasn't wealthy, he found satisfaction in his craft. But as the years passed, Rio began to feel that his life was unimportant. He looked around and saw others who seemed to have more power, wealth, and influence. The king ruled over the land, the merchants traded goods from distant places, and even the sun seemed to have a more significant role than he did. Rio couldn't help but wish for something more. He started to feel that being a stonecutter wasn't enough. One day, as he worked under the hot sun, Rio wiped the sweat from his brow and looked up at the sky. The sun was shining brightly, its rays touching everything in sight. Rio thought to himself, the sun is so powerful. It can reach everywhere and everyone. How amazing it must be to be the sun. To his surprise, a voice answered him. If you wish to be the sun, so be it, the voice said. Suddenly, Rio found himself high in the sky, glowing and radiating warmth across the world. He was no longer a stonecutter, he was the sun. He felt powerful and important. As the sun, he could touch every corner of the earth, warming people and helping plants grow. For a while, Rio was happy. But as time passed, Rio noticed something strange. A dark cloud moved in front of him, blocking his rays from reaching the earth. No matter how bright he shone, the cloud covered him, casting a shadow over the land below. This cloud is stronger than I am, Rio thought. It can block my light. I wish I could be a cloud. Once again, the mysterious voice spoke, if you wish to be a cloud, so be it. And just like that, Rio became a cloud. He floated freely in the sky, feeling light and powerful. As a cloud, he could drift across the sky, bringing rain to the fields and cooling the earth on hot days. He felt like he was making a real difference in the world. However, as Rio drifted, he soon encountered a massive mountain that stood tall and unmovable. No matter how much he tried, he couldn't cover the entire mountain or move it from its place. The mountain remained strong, unaffected by Rio's presence. This mountain is stronger than I am, Rio thought. It stands firm and unmovable. I wish I could be a mountain. The voice returned, saying, if you wish to be a mountain, so be it. Suddenly, Rio was transformed into a mighty mountain. He stood tall and proud, his peaks reaching toward the sky. He felt invincible, sure that nothing could be stronger than he was now. As a mountain, he could withstand storms, winds, and the passage of time. He was immovable, and he believed he had finally found the strength he had always desired. But as Rio stood there, something unexpected happened. He felt a small but persistent tapping at his base. Looking down, he saw a stonecutter working away with a hammer and chisel, slowly but steadily chipping away pieces of the mountain. The stonecutter's hands were strong and skilled, and with each strike, a small part of the mountain was shaped and removed. In that moment, Rio realized something profound. The stonecutter, who had once been his former self, had the power to shape even the mighty mountain. The stonecutter's strength didn't come from his physical size or power, but from his patience, persistence, and skill. Rio understood that true strength wasn't about being the most powerful or important figure in the world. It was about making a difference with the skills you have, no matter how small they might seem. Rio wished to be a stonecutter once more. 
if you wish to be a stonecutter again, so be it, the voice said. Ryo found himself back in his village, with his tools in hand. But now, he saw his work in a new light. He no longer felt the need to be something greater or more powerful. He realized that his work, though simple, had real value. Every stone he shaped contributed to the world around him, and that was enough. From that day on, Ryo embraced his life as a stonecutter with renewed passion. He no longer envied the sun, the clouds, or the mountains. He knew that his role in life was just as important as any other. By doing his best and taking pride in his work, he could make a real difference. And that was the true meaning of strength. The Lesson of the Story The story of Rio the Stonecutter teaches us that true strength and motivation come from within. It's not about having the most power, wealth, or influence, but about recognizing the value in who you are and what you do. No matter how small or insignificant your work may seem, it has the power to shape the world in meaningful ways. This story also reminds us that chasing after something that isn't truly aligned with our purpose can leave us feeling unfulfilled. Rio's journey from the sun to the cloud, to the mountain, and finally back to being a stonecutter, shows that sometimes the most important thing we can do is to appreciate and embrace the role we already have. In our own lives, it's easy to get caught up in comparing ourselves to others, wishing for more power, more influence, or a different path. But like Rio, we might find that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Instead, by focusing on our own strengths and contributions, we can find true fulfillment and make a lasting impact on the world around us. So, the next time you feel like your efforts are insignificant or that you wish for something more, remember Rio the Stonecutter. Your work, no matter how small it seems, has value. By embracing who you are and what you do, you can find true happiness and strength in your own life.